to flows news this week cover bitcoin chart let's talk about some flows because we're real big on flows bitcoin this week blackrock actually had an outflow they went like four or five days without having an inflow or outflow and finally they registered a negative outflow grayscale has still been dumping but i wanted to point this out they are now down to 292,000 bitcoin left I think they started with like 630, 650,000. So they've dumped over 350,000 Bitcoin to this point. And they continue to bleed, but the bleed's really not accelerating like you would kind of think with this market structure. Um, but they have been using everything they can to scare the bejesus out of the market. Um, and one thing I've noticed, Grayscale has started to transfer um, loads of Bitcoin, clips of Bitcoin into Coinbase. But what we've noticed is they don't sell this much the same day. So it's looking like they preemptively send big batches of Bitcoin and they don't do these in single transactions. You can see these like 42, 42, 42, 10 mil, 19, 42, 214K, whatever. They come in clips, especially you see how these come in in 700s. And what we've seen is on Farside's website that tracks this. So shout out Far for making this. Just drop the link in the chat. This is the far side ETF flow data, and it doesn't look like they've added the Hong Kong stuff yet, but I do want to see that. But for the most part, you saw that they, they loaded like $250 million in a single day. None of these days were like 250. So it's kind of an interesting flow metric is they transfer a bunch to Coinbase and then they kind of stall out and then I guess they feed it over time. Um, regardless, we saw a really, really, really bad day yesterday, May 1st. Total of 563,000 or 563 million dollars worth of Bitcoin. Note these are in million dollar notations, but every single one outflowed. And this is the EF or BlackRock one, two, three, four, five days that they went zero and then they finally had a negative outflow. So we definitely don't like seeing that. But with that being said, the market isn't down in the 20s. So it's kind of interesting to see this. With that being said, also, Hong Kong's ETFs and online and the first day they actually had bitcoins ETF brought in 10 million and then the second day they actually brought in 8 million so we actually saw Hong Kong ETFs go live I'll be at the mainland China is not allowed to do it but they've been bringing in quite a bit of cash so it's really cool to see those ETFs go live regardless and push forward into um, the market so now we kind of have, we're getting more in ETFs online throughout, throughout the way. But speaking of ETFs, and you notice that Hong Kong has an Ethereum ETF. Oh, hold on. I just clicked out of it. Hold on. Bear with me. There we are. Sorry, I clicked the wrong thing. The SEC is expected to deny the spot Ethereum ETFs next month, industry in sources say. Note this was on April 25th. They're referring to the month of May. Now, this is saying is the insiders are saying the SEC is not playing ball. They're likely to kill off, um, not approve, the spot Ethereum ETF, which we've covered this before. Long term, they're going to win it um, just because of the leveraged ETFs that already exist for Bitcoin and Ethereum legal cases they used for that to get Bitcoin approved. You're going to see that for Ethereum, but the Gensler very well may force the world to take him back to court, kicking and screaming. Shout out Coinbase legal team. You guys rock. We love Paul, but you're probably going to see that maybe is what this is hinting at. Now they may come out and approve it. They may come out and deny it. When given a choice, what does Gary do? Gary always chooses the dirtiest, nastiest route and will force you to drag him kicking and screaming to a logical decision. Now, this is the actual ETF calendar for all of the Ethereum ETFs that were submitted a while back. Um, there may have been some new ones, but regardless, the key point here is SEC final deadline. SEC never makes a crypto decision on the freaking day deadline. They always, always, always kick it to the very end. And like I said, kicking, dragging, and screaming, he will push us up to the deadline. Now, that 
earliest one where there's no more couple days to kick down the road is May 23rd. And that's the Van Eck Ethereum ETF. So Gary Gensler has to come out, assuming his Twitter account hasn't been hacked and they haven't disarmed two-factor authentication again. They have to come out and say yay or nay. I, at this point, it's a nay, and then Ethereum's likely going to just fall off the face of the earth. I'm going to buy pain and grab more Ethereum on spot. That's my plan. Or he's going to prove it. Price is going to send whatever. Um, the point is, May 23rd. That's our next uh, S show, needless to say. No cussing. That's coming soon. It's in a few weeks. And that is going to shake, rattle, and roll the entire crypto industry. Um, and there's just, there's just no way around it. Um, and I actually don't have my chart up for this, but the point is Ethereum, that's really what I'm interested in. 